Real conversation, real connection. It's Real Life with John Cowan on News Talk ZB. Welcome to Real Life, and I was just saying to my guest before we came on that this show is so much fun for me personally, being able to find out people's stories. And I'm sure you're going to really love the story tonight. My guest tonight, I, well, I, I should say at the start that I've got shirts in my wardrobe that are older than my guest. Oh, hey. uh, so, <laughs> and, yeah. But Alex Gilbert, welcome to Real Life. Oh, nice and, to be here, John. And uh, even though you are still so young, mind you, most people are young from my perspective these days, but you're very, very young, but you've yep. achieved such a lot that's of real significance. Thank you. I mean, some of that wasn't uh, of your own making. It was just amazing things that have happened to you. But subsequently to that, you've actually taken what's happened to you and you've turned it into something which has been immensely useful and interesting for thousands of people. So, Alex, welcome to Real Life. And... um, you come from Whangarei, but uh, which did. is which is considered the north by a lot of people. But your your story actually started a lot further north than Whangarei. It did. It um it, it started right in the top of Russia in Arkhangelsk. Um and you know I was born there on the first of April, nineteen ninety two, April Fool's Day, yes. as, as a lot of people would un- a lot of people would know. <laughs> um, I came to Whangarei when I was two years old, uh, along with my brother Andre, and we're both adopted from an orphanage up there. Now, uh, so Arkhangelsk. Ar- is, Ar- 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 it's considered the back of beyond, even yes. in Russia, isn't it? Yes. It's in the, right up the very far north. It is it? Right at the top. It's and very known to be very cold yes. in the wintertime, long winters, and just like you're talking negative 30 degrees in the wintertime. Wow. Oh, he, oh. I know. I know. You're telling me. And so that's where you chose to be born. That's it. Yep. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now, what on earth are a couple from Fongaray doing hunting for babies in that part of Russia? Well, believe it or not, in the 90s, a lot of New Zealand parents were able to adopt from Arkhangelsk in the, in, throughout the 90s. Mm-hmm. And um, my parents were given the option to adopt from Russia as they had some friends that had done that as well. Uh, my parents weren't able to have children themselves. So mm-hmm. they looked at the option of international adoption and that was what they chose. Yep. And I say to this day, I'm very thankful they chose that. All right. So you may not have chosen to be born there. And, no. <laughs> and you didn't probably have much choice in the parents that came and picked you from Whangarei. But if you did have a choice, that would have been a pretty good choice, picking that those parents from Whangarei. Definitely. You've, you've, uh, 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 you've, by the way, Alex has written a couple of books. <laughs> and um, uh, in it, he speaks. you speak so warmly mm. of your adoptive parents in Whangarei. I, I love them very much. They really raised me and my brother very well, and I'm very thankful to and, them. So to, uh, uh, your brother is your, uh, he, was, he came from the same orphanage? Same orphanage, different birth parents. Yes. And uh, he's, yeah, I grew up with him and he's just my brother. You know, okay. he is my brother. I was, nothing else really. He is my, he's my one and only brother. Okay. So, <laughs> New Zealand brother. New Zealand say. brother. Now you are, you are Gus, uh, Gusovskoy Alexander Viktorovich. Oh, oh yes. And, um, uh, yes. Yes. That's uh, my birth name. Your so, birth name. My birth, it's a bit confusing actually with my birth name is the name that my birth mother named me. Yes. And then so when I was two years old, I was named legally Sasha Alexander Gilbert with mm-hmm. my New Zealand family. So when that was officially changed, I officially became a Gilbert. Yes. And that's the 1st of August when that when that changed over okay. my name. Right. I okay. Remember, I don't remember it, but, but that's a day that's important. Growing up, did you feel Russian at all? Uh, look, look, growing up in Whangarei, um, I... I, f- I felt like I was interested to in know about Russia. I knew a lot about Russia from my mum and dad. They were so open and honest about where we come from. It was always, we're not only just a New Zealand home, but we're also a Russian home as well. So we had a mix of Russian things everywhere, everywhere, Russian photos, Russian videos from the orphanage, from all those. So videos of your of your time of in, us in the orphanage. Did, did you have any memories of the orphanage, no, or no do you memories. just have memories now of the videos? Just me, um, just looking at the photos and videos, yeah. and that's what always fascinated me growing up, seeing where we came from, okay. and then we look outside and it's like this beautiful, you know, this nice Whangarei town and beautiful parents, and it's really great to grow up with that and have that knowledge of where we came from because my parents were very honest about that. But something started itching. Something starting started itching, and when I yeah got to twenty one years of age, I thought right, I'm actually going to try and maybe do a search for my birth parents. And no, see. no, no, no. You searched earlier than that. Okay, I did a search. Okay, okay. <laughs> You've read the book, obviously. Okay. <laughs> when I was seventeen, I did a little bit of a search for my birth parents, yeah. um, and I reached out to somebody 
Um, but this is just me no, trying to be curious. About now, but but this, I want to. Uh, the reason I mentioned that wasn't yeah. just to pull you up and correct you. It must be <laughs> encouraging for people to hear that sometimes you can do a search yes. and it doesn't work out. Yes, that's and correct. And so not to get too disheartened, but to actually just put it on the shelf and you came back to it. I came and, back to it. And this time, that's correct. So the first time I was, I was, you know, in high school, I was like, what if I found some information about my birth parents? What yeah. if I did a search for them? I wasn't so much, the, that's what I'm saying is mm. rec- now the next search was the big, that yeah. was the big finale. This yeah. was the big search. So first of all, it's curiosity. Second of all, was like, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to find some information. And that's that's what I was determined to do. Yeah. Were you worried that you might find them, but they wouldn't want to have anything to do with you? Definitely. I was so worried. I was worried about, um, I guess, finding them, getting cu- getting in touch with them, going to Russia, they might not want to see me. Mm. That was my worry. Okay. Um, things like that. Just, or and my parents had that worry as well. It's just the whole side of rejection, everything like that. But I wouldn't. I was prepared for that. Always, you got to always prepare, be be prepared for anything that right. comes your way. Now it wasn't very easy because your your birth mother was still in sort of Soviet era attitudes yep. to technology and things. So she yes. wasn't on Facebook or anything. She wasn't on Facebook. She you know she doesn't use Messenger. She doesn't use anything like that. She didn't even have a phone so, when but, I reached out to her. But fortunately, people who knew her did. People not. knew her. Yes. Yeah. So they went to her place and they knocked on the door and said, "Hey, you have a son in New Zealand." And she she denied it first. And then they came back to her a few days later and she said, yes, I do have a son. Um, I don't know what happened to him. And the lady said, here's a photo of him. Here's about his life. He lives in New Zealand now. And she was just, she didn't know what to think. Yeah. I really, I think she was just shocked and stunned. And But she was excited at the same time. I suppose one might think there might be less <laughs> confronting ways for someone to be informed of that, I know. But uh, and given the circumstances, re- it's amazing that it happened at all, isn't it? That these people kn- knew your mum, knew you that you were hunting, yep. and made that connection. And she was, was courageous enough then to to make know, contact. I don't know how she was so, um, I guess, welcoming in that sense. Because imagine being, I just, I always think about her side or putting your, you know, being in her shoes and having someone knock on your door and mm. saying, you have a son. I mean, I would be. I wouldn't know what to say. Mm. I really wouldn't. I'd be, I'd be asking questions and everything. Asking okay, all sorts of things. It would be, yeah. Now she was living now a thousand kilometres away from where you were born. Uh, yep. Yep. And, uh, Rabinsk. So, yeah. And uh, she's she was living. She lives now a six hour drive away from Moscow. Yep. So she moved to Rabinsk after um, after I was born. Yeah. And she actually left the town and didn't tell anybody. Okay. She would have been just a, a teenager when you she were was, born. She was uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. Yeah, and very hard for her. Yeah. Very young, just yeah. very. She, she was in an orphanage herself growing up, and she didn't know her family. And I got a feeling she kind of just thought maybe this was the right thing to do. I can't look after this this child. Mm. Um, this is the best decision that I have to give for this child. And I think she made the right decision. And in my way, I respect that, and I don't. Um, I don't have anything against her or anything. No grudges, nothing. I just mm. I look at what things are now and that mm. we can develop a relationship and get in contact that's mm. the main thing that's mm. the only thing we can do now yeah and that's that's what i feel is that is the main reason why i contacted her because i wanted to grow that relationship with her she sometimes said i'm so sorry about what happened when you were born i said tatiana don't worry about it i've got this beautiful family that raised me and she yeah. understands that yeah and i'll just like to get in contact with you and keep that going as well and so you went to russia Went to Russia, yeah. And be- because you work in TV, you had a f- some Actually, mates with some video cameras, had some mates and, and with so, some cameras. And so, folks, you can track this down on YouTube. Yeah. That the, this this boy from New- from Fongarei going into Rubinsk, the, the old story. Yeah. And there's your mum standing <laughs> yeah. on the side of a street outside of her apartment. And right. th- there's a sadness there in that there she is. doesn't know how to respond really. And it was. Honestly, it was. I remember that day so clearly, like it was yeah. yesterday. It was just getting out of that car, going over to see her and giving giving her the hug, and it was just she didn't know how to respond at all. No. It just it felt very awkward when I met her, and I kind of felt like, in some ways, I always thought to myself, "Am I doing the wrong thing here? Hmm. Should have I come this way? Maybe she doesn't want to meet me. Hmm. Um, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing." Um, I always questioned myself with that at the hmm. end of the day because I only saw her for a few hours and then I left. Yeah. And it was just always, you always question yourself that, but then also again, what would it be like if I never met her? But time has gone on. Time has gone on. How is your relationship with your birth mother now? 
I keep in touch with her. We don't have a strong relationship, but we do have contact, mm -hmm. like direct contact now. Yeah. And I can call her, I can text her, and if I want to send her photos, I send them through to a friend and she gets them. So you get the idea that she was glad that you made contact? Definitely. I, I uh, definitely do. I've met her three times since I've met her first the first time. So right. that's uh, So you've it, been back to Russia I've three been times? Been back since. to Russia oh, in total five times. Five times to Russia. Yep. Wow. So I just wanted to keep on growing that contact with my birth parents. Now that's one part of your story. The other side of the story, of course, is meeting your birth father. And look, yes. I am a crusty, pretty cynical sort of a guy. But when I saw the video of you meeting your dad, honestly, it's so emotional and no wonder it's had millions of views yeah. on on I, the internet. I mean, just I, he yeah. first of all, he looks exactly like you. He's a copy. He, yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> it could have been you just uh, going to the makeup department and getting yep, done up. But exactly, uh, and but he acts like you too. Yep. Uh, I, yeah, it was. It's it's so, and he's so delighted to see you. It's it's so weird. I don't know how strong the genetics are but they are strong yeah and when i go and see when i saw him for the first time remember he didn't know i existed he knew nothing of me okay so out of the blue he discovers he's got a son yep i sent him a message i remember it on um the russian social network site called vikontakte which mm -hmm. is in contact like for in mm -hmm. and i uh, reached out to him on there and i said oh i just said hello do you know tatiana gizvogoskia and he said, um, yes. <laughs> Where's this going? He said, he said you know, dot, 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 um, who are you? And I had to explain to him with Google Translate at the time. Yes. And I went through um, just trying to explain to him about, I said it very nicely. I said, look, um, I'd like to tell you what's going on, the story, the situation. Mm. Are you willing to, you know, get in touch and Skype maybe and chat mm. about it? And then that's when he knew everything was happening. And he said, right. I've told my family. He said he's told all his extended family. Yeah. The next day, the next 24 hours was just message after message. And he Skyped me um, a few days after that. And when I Skyped him for the first time, he just started bawling his eyes out, crying. <laughs> yeah. And he was so emotional and he felt so bad. And he said, so I'm so sorry. I didn't know about you. He said, I would have raised you. I would have looked after you. Tatiana, I wish you told me. Yeah. And I said, look, again, me, I said to Misha, he understands about my parents, of course, and he's and he's so proud of my parents. He mm. said, "I'm so happy for them raising you." Yep. And then again, he's got this other side where he's like, "I wish I would have known." Mm -hmm. But then again, I I say to him, "Look at the present now. Look, yeah. we have this contact. Let's let's make this happen." Yeah, that's one of the lovely things about the story is that um, everybody is so positive about it. There's no slam doors being slammed in your face. <laughs> no I mean, there's his face. new wife who who could have said, yep. oh, hold on, hold yep, on. I hold on, hold the bus. But hold on. <laughs> yep. But no, she's welcoming you. And, she's she's and, really nice. Uh, and the new daughter. And, and yes, your half-sister. Half-brother sister half sister and, and, and uh, half -brother over and, there. Yeah. <laughs> it just opens the world to our family. Makes it. My parents always told me it, felt, it really feels like our family is growing. Right. Overnight. Yeah. And it has. Yeah, it's a bit more of a family hedge than a family tree, but it's... It's, uh, it's way more. <laughs> <laughs> but in that complexity is some some marvellous stuff. That's now, crazy. that's Alex's, uh, or part of it, any his backstory. But what's happening in, in this world at the moment is fascinating, what he's doing with this and how he's helping other people um, come to terms with their own adoption stories. And so we'll be talking more with Alex Gilbert after this break. This is News Talk ZB. I'm John Cowan. This is Real Life. Mr. Fix You by Coldplay, chosen by my guest tonight, Alex Gilbert. And this is a special, significant song for you? Well, this is a song that I grew up really listening to, and it's always a song that I would I would listen to if, um, <clears throat> I guess not if something's bothering me or anything like that, but it'll always be, a, it'll give me goof, goosebumps, the song. Yeah. Always gives me goosebumps. And it's very, it just shows you that um, there's always light at the end of the tunnel, you know? Hmm. If something is really letting you down or bothering you just if anything obstacles in your way it's always a nice song to just listen to and yeah that's why <laughs> do you feel like life has got some purpose for you yes that, that i think it's happening yes i feel like um well i'm very grateful and thankful to everything that's been going on um and i only just want to keep on i guess doing what i'm doing and keep on going with that only just to hopefully obviously mention later but helping other people mm. so that's why if you've just joined us alex gilbert has uh was born in russia and adopted by a new zealand family and in recent years he's uh discovered and made contact with his both his birth mother and his birth father his birth father didn't know existed but just welcomed into the bosom of the family over there 
and uh, be- because Alex works in broadcasting, you, the, the, this is all available on YouTube. You have a YouTube channel, Alex Gilbert, if you track that down. But um, and you've subsequently gone back multiple times, including to the orphanage. I have. I've been back to my orphanage in Arkangles uh, twice. Yes. Uh, 2017 and end of last year as well. Right. And I, first time I went over there because I want to go and see what what was it all about. Mm-hmm. Go and see how they looked after the children, see mm-hmm. what the condition was, see if there was anyone there that was there from when I was there. And there was. There was people there, still there, that looked after me. And remembered you? And remembered me. So you've got an extra family. You've got your <laughs> orphanage family. I've got the orphanage family. Um, now, that was so, so, so nice to me. Yeah. And they welcomed me and they just really, they were really positive about everything. And they just got emotional seeing, yeah. seeing this guy from New Zealand come over all the way to the top of Russia. Loaded and, with gifts, by the way. With gifts. So the yeah. second time I took a box of gifts over for the children, yeah. um, me and a one friend who was also from the orphanage, we collected right. a big box, and we I went over there just to take the box, but I wanted to go and help them out. Now, the people have taken a huge amount of interest in this story, and one of the you know the videos, especially of meeting your dad, what two million views or something? Two million, yeah. yeah. That was on Facebook. Yeah, that went on to one of those, you know, Facebook pages with the yeah. fifty million or so <laughs> likes, something crazy. You're talking crazy numbers. Yeah, and the feedback was. Amazing, but that's the thing. This resonates, but because adoption is not an uncommon story. Yours is a r- remarkable enough, but it's not unique. In that, it's, what six hundred New Zealand kids were adopted yeah, in the nineties from, from Russia, six hundred yeah. plus. And that's that's the thing, um, which is always surprising. Is when a lot of people ask me about the story, I can relate with also a lot of friends who are also adopted from, from mm. Russia. We all have that sort of thing we can talk about in common right and it's very it's it's good it's good to i i should mention that uh, um, alex was nominated as new zealand young new zealand of the young year Zealand's and year, yeah. uh, also honored in, in russia too yes. for some of the work that you've been doing subsequent to they this they gave me um yeah they gave me a few awards from um from the state for helping the orphanage out last year okay which well was nice <laughs> but also You've been on TV shows in in, in Russia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're embarrassing do you, do you me. Do you, do you sometimes think I'm is getting this my, shy, is this my life, or did I pick up the wrong? Or, you know, pick up someone else's life by mistake. Yeah, uh, yeah. We did. A, I did a um, documentary in Moscow about yeah. um, helping. I guess helping with my story. And this was around the time in 2017. I went over there because I got to speak with parents who had adopted children inside Russia, mm. and I also spoke with teenagers who were adopt um, adoptees himself. Yeah. And it was it was so it was so amazing just to meet these other people these people inside Russia who have mm. gone through the adoption process and sitting down with them they asked me all sorts of questions and um, it was oh, it was definitely worth doing and with the TV show over there we did a documentary and we also did the um, talk show mm. <laughs> over there which in which my mum and dad met my birth parents so your mum and dad came from Fongare and came met from your birth, parents. birth parents on had, on uh, Russian state television which. <laughs> Um, I it's a bit I, surreal. It was yeah. a bit surreal. I don't regret that because it was. A, I'll tell you, it was a crazy experience. Mm. But I look back and I'm just. It was. It happened. Yeah. <laughs> now the thing is, as I say, your story remarkable, not unique though. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you found it so cathartic, so helpful, and so liberating that you have been helping other people with their adoption stories. Tell yes. me about this. So we, I established a like a community project, um, like an organization called I'm Adopted, uh, about four years ago now. And it's an online Facebook page that helps adopted people all around the world Mm. uh, share their stories. And it has been incredible, Mm. hundreds of stories. I organized meetups around the country. Mm. I did a meetup last year actually in Ireland when I was over there for a visit. And uh, we did did one yesterday in Wellington. Yeah. So these are adopted people. Adopted people. um, uh, That... uh, but been sitting on stuff. Yes, I believe that it's a it's opened up a forum for adopted people to talk to each other, have a voice. Um, it can be in a private group or it can be publicly as well. But it's it's having that support there, and that's what I want for mm. a, a lot of us who are adopted from overseas or inside New Zealand, having that support. Now, your experience of adoption overwhelmingly positive. Your experience of meeting your birth parents, yes, especially your dad, overwhelmingly positive. Yes, is this the, that's not always a story though. It's not always a story. It's um it's it's it is hard for people and you get stories where obviously birth parents are not really interested in meeting um 
uh, their their children yeah. or anything like that. And that, that does happen. And there's stories where someone will do a search um, to find out about these birth parents and the birth parents go, nope, I don't want anything to do with these children. And um, it is, yeah, it's difficult. What do you happen. say to these people? How do they, how do you help them to, to cope? I mean, it was, it well, that's, that's with I'm adopted. That's what the support there. That's what the support is there for. Mm. It's about talking to each other. And I, I always say that this is from my own personal sort of, speaking here it's always like give it time um talk to a friend talk to your family and just be patient with what can happen because it's can it is it's a very tricky situation in Mm. that way and it can be very difficult but i believe that if you've got someone there to talk to that's that's important step what about adopt the adoptee parents have I got the right term right? The adoptive, Ad- adoptive, adoptive, adoptive parents. Adoptive parents, yeah. Do they sometimes get jealous and feel odd? I know your parents have been yeah, re- remarkably re- welcoming of this whole th- yep. I- episode in your life, knowing yep. that it's part of your journey to to, to complete you in some respect. Yep. But I imagine that some parents could get pretty twitchy about Don't get birth me wrong. parents coming I comple- back. I completely understand that. Yeah. And it does... It does happen with that, with parents being a bit edgy about their children mm. searching for birth parents. Yeah. But this is what I'm trying to create with the project is kind of showing a, um, a side that it's okay to search for your birth parents. Yeah. If, if one, people, a lot of us adopted people, adoptees, just want to connect, mm. just want to know who they are. Yeah. Curious, um, finding out where we come from, our bloodline. Mm. That's That's most of us that we want to know about. Yeah. And having that support with the parents, I recommend is, is it's it's amazing to have that support. But it's very tricky and very hard to if you don't have the parents there to help. Right. And it can be like that. Now, in 2013, the door slammed shut on international it adoption. Did. What do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so Russia and New Zealand can't adopt. They can't do adoptions between each, between the countries anymore. Yeah. Um, that's been shut for a while since then. And it's... <laughs> It's hard. You've spoken to government, haven't you? I have spoken to the government and the Russian government. <laughs> um, but it's really, it's it's just, it's it's difficult. So, I wrote so it. they welcome that you're trying to help the adoptees. Yes. They, but they, they but look they, forward but to they, that. But they just eyes glaze over a little bit when you talk about well, allowing this to happen again. The Russian, when I spoke with the Russian government, I actually wrote a letter to um, the president over there in 2017 yeah. and they he put me through to their children rights lady so I met her yeah. in, in Moscow in 2017 I never got to meet the president but that's no. okay um, but I got to meet the children rights minister and she had a chat with me and she just said look what will happen will happen We maybe an agreement will come into play sometime mm-hmm. and that's the only thing you can really think of think of yeah. what might happen and might come to light again but I just you just never know I wish it did I, I really wish it will Alex we're coming to the uh, end of the show you got another song picked for us I do actually it's um oh can I say or are you yeah, gonna play sure, it you on? can say it what it is it's uh, Don't Forget Your Roots by 660 how appropriate it's hey, a give, us, give us some websites and things that people are interested in finding yeah, more so um, imadopter.org is my website imadopter.org uh, Alex Gilbert on Facebook all the you know, social media it's all there or yes. imadopter.org you'll find some fascinating videos there and Alex YouTube. thank you for taking time thank to speak you so to much.